Welcome back to AL.com Film Room. I'm John Parker Wilson, joined by special guest this week, Mike Johnson, offensive lineman for the Atlanta Falcons right now. And coming off this huge 20-13 uh, to 13 win, we'll get down and break down some of the running plays. I'm having the luxury of an offensive lineman being in there this week, so we'll – We'll get to use his brain, pick it a little bit. But, Mike, you were at the game um, in a great environment. What, what were your thoughts uh, going through the game? You got to sit there right there in the end zone. So, I know it was a good environment. What, what were your thoughts? Uh, well, you know, uh, just going down to Baton Rouge, like me and you both know, man, it's always a tough place to, uh, to come away with a victory. There's always some kind of overtime or, you know, it's always a great crowd. And um, I, thought, I thought we played well. I thought it was a good game. I thought a lot of guys uh, on the team grew up. And, uh, and when it came down to it, we pulled out a, a victory. Definitely. Well, it was a tough road win from Alabama, which kind of – so some struggles on the road, but let's get into some of the run plays and break these down a little bit further. All right, let's take a look at an early run play right here in the first quarter. We're going to have uh, Blake Sims hand off to the right, um, right tackle to TJ Yellen. Mike, kind of just talk about this play, what you're seeing here from the offensive lineman up front. Well, when you look at these zone plays that are so important in Alabama's scheme, the uh, first thing you want to pay attention to is our guards. And, uh, you know, it's wasn't a very successful play. Uh, you see Kwanjo kind of get stuffed in the hole a little bit by, uh, the, run, uh, by the linebacker. And, uh, you know, kind of it kind of forces uh, the ball to go front side where, you know, our right guard uh, kind of got his head down a little bit and whiffed on a block. But this guy um, right here. Yeah, it's uh, it's a brown. And uh, he, he's just, you know, he got his head down a little bit and kind of, uh, you know, he got swim move. So um, there's really nowhere for the running back to go. And he he does a good job of putting his head down and getting as many yards as he can. But, um, you know, they got to do a better job up front here. And they did uh, later on in the game. Okay, another run play right here. TJ, we got a linebacker screaming out the middle. What happened on this play, and why was it not successful? Well, if you look at it, it looks like the, uh, the communication's off between the tight end and the center. Uh, we left a, a, a linebacker come free through the A-gap on the backside, and if you look, it looks like 70 and 85 or 86 are actually blocking the same call side linebacker. Right. You talking and about this guy right here? This guy right here, and you, if you see Kelly work up at the second level, he should be on this backside guy, or you know whatever the scheme is, it might be a cross block, but... Somebody's got to block the guy in the A-gap. You always got to protect your A-gap, and you see him kind of take out Yeldon's feet in the backfield. Uh, really has no chance to make any cut and make any kind of play. Right, so we're getting very technical, but it was just a little bit of mis miscommunication on who we're going to block to. The front side backer kind of came free, and the back side of backer was also let, let free. Right, that's the kind of thing that ends up being kind of a halftime adjustment. Maybe it wasn't what they quite saw on film or expected, and, and you kind of get in and make some adjustments as the game goes on and, and, and you know, open up the communication down the road. Very nice. So is this something that you talk with the offensive line coach? How do you kind of – is this on the sidelines? When, when do you kind of go through that? Absolutely. You'll see them get to the sideline. They're drawing up plays, drawing up linebacker placements. Maybe it's a different personnel package. They might have an extra corner in or an extra safety. Somebody you're not accounting for as a linebacker, and they kind of have to account for that. They have to move around their assignments, you know, communicate with the tight ends and make sure the running back knows where the cut's going to be. Right. So the offense, the, uh, the quarterback and the receivers kind of sit on one side, and, and we're talking about what we see in the secondary – um, and what kind of what the routes are looking like while you're talking with the with the tight ends and the running backs trying to figure out who you're going to key in the run game and kind of figure out who you're going to block. Exactly. The next play we're going to look at is the, is the option read by Blake Sims, something we've seen more and more as the season's going on. Lane Kippen is really putting a lot more um, up to up to Blake Sims on if he's going to run it or, or throw it. And right here we'll see we'll see Blake pull it down. Um, first thing we know we're going to run the ball with two safeties, so we got two deep. It's a great look to run the ball. You always want to throw it. When there's one safety, when there's two safeties, you want to be able to run the ball. Um, we see Blake pull it, and he's reading this defensive end right here and kind of gets caught in a bind. Mike, tell us what would have happened if he could have handed this ball off to Yeldon and what would have happened on the front side. Well, what you see right here is the numbers front side are three for three, and what we have on the back side is, a, is, is what we call a B block between the left guard and left tackle, Kawanjo and Cam Robinson. Their linebacker is so far flown out there because of the guy flying outside that they're kind of they're kind of double teaming and nobody. So you th you see that they have a lot of success, get a lot of good push on the backside three technique, and they're kind of just pushing him out of the way, hoping that you know if the if the running back gets the ball right here, he he should have a seam. Seventy uh, will be manned up on this front side linebacker, and and we actually have a pretty good play lined up uh, in the running game, uh, but but Yeldon doesn't get the ball. Right, we've we've got everybody blocked, and it's just the, the defensive end kind of hangs around, struggles around, and makes a play. Uh, but something we've seen more, and, the, and it's good to see that front side blocking uh, by the big guys up front. Okay, so we've seen a lot of new plays from, from this Lane Kiffin offense, and this one in particular, we saw the zone read a second ago before. Now we're going to see another design quarterback run, and a very interesting design right here. 
We've got the running back coming out of the backfield, so you'll see all these linebackers flowing, and it just does a nice job of opening up a lane for Blake to get right here. Picks up the first down in a nice long run. Mike, talk us about what's going on up front right here. Well, what you see is you have the back backside guard pulling in Kawanjo, and they're opening up a seam. Austin Shepard does a great job on his down block on this three technique, kind of starting the play. You can't, you can't get looped outside. You can't get penetration. He does a great job pinning the three technique. That allows Kawanjo to kick out the end and Justin Fowler to do a great job on the guy coming down trying to fill the hole. And what you have when you have a, you know, a quarterback in the running game is, is you have the defense out, outnumbered. So we got an extra guy right there um, blocking, frees up, Blake Sims running the ball. Right, and, and they do an excellent job front side, like I said, of creating a seam. Um, you just have the defense outnumbered on the back side with the running back uh, flying out. So first play overtime right here. We've got the ball, and we're going to send a statement early. And we see, you know, another great play call by Lane Kiffin. They've probably been practicing this play all year, probably since the summer. And, you know, this is the, the ideal, the perfect time to pull it out. And we'll see the biggest uh, receiver in history right here. <laughs> Cam Robinson split out and kind of just throws it off. The, uh, throws it off the defense, and what happens is the tackle is going to be eligible. And since we've got an eligible for formation, then we could run this play because we have our seven guys on the line. The only thing difference is instead of the tackle usually being ineligible right here because of the way Cam Robinson is split out and he's on the ball, now the offensive tackle, Brandon Green, is eligible to run a pass and just a great design. You know, nobody knows what this big guy's doing out here, and when the Blake – snaps the ball, and just runs a great play. But, Mike, you've kind of been there, and you scored a touchdown with the Falcons being a big guy catching off its line. What is it like running that route and knowing that the ball is going to come and you're going to have to catch that ball in a tight situation? Uh, I'm not going to lie. It's a frightening thing. And it, it was actually really similar to this. I was in the Superdome playing the Saints, and, and you kind of had a, a thing where, you know, the defense sets up in a certain way where you know you're going to come open. And, and since we have so many players on the offense right here that are dangerous, you know, your Amari Coopers, your Yeldons, or whoever's in the game, it was the same way with me, with Tony Gonzalez. Roddy White and you kind of those guys get caught up the defense gets caught up in uh, you know defending the actual playmakers that they forget about some of the guys that are that are uh, running free and you know what you have here is just it's a, it's an old school look it's a new school look at an old school play a tackle eligible where you have Cam Robinson down there and uh, the defense just kind of gets caught off guard and anytime you have a, a receiver down there with knee braces on you might want to uh, to check out what you're doing definitely and I'm just glad he didn't fumble the ball you could tell that was the first thing on his mind was to wrap it up because he could have scored having 400 pounds to go in the end zone, but wrapped it up and got us down to the one-yard line. You know that Nick, no matter what, the first thing on his mind was do not fumble this ball. So I'm sure that he was harping on it all week. Good catch and good finish to the play. Ended up winning, uh, winning the game for Alabama. But thanks again for joining us right here on the AL.com Film Room. Special guest Mike Johnson. Hopefully we can get him back. But it was just fun to break it down with you, and I appreciate you being here, Mike. Awesome. Join us later in the week. We'll continue to break down the games a little bit further. But uh, for John Parker Wilson and Mike Johnson, uh, thanks again.